Nearly 30 years ago, John Herstick and his team of founders released SOLIDWORKS 95, the first edition of what would quickly become the dominant 3D CAD platform in mechanical design and engineering. This coming year, SOLIDWORKS celebrates its Pearl anniversary as it turns 30 years old, and as always, a new release means new features, new performance updates, and of course my favorite, new splash screen images. So stick around, we're covering our very favorite parts of what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2025. Now this video is going to give you a very quick look at what we believe are the most impactful enhancements for this coming year, but we'll be providing a lot more detail on each of the top enhancements individually over the next several videos in this series, so be sure to keep watching. And before we get started, I'd like to offer a huge thank you to the Naphide Manufacturing Company, who've been kind enough to partner with us in order to bring you this series on what's new in SOLIDWORKS for the 2025 edition. Naphide is the leading designer and manufacturer for custom truck bodies, equipment, and accessories, and the models you'll be seeing here are all based on their fully configurable KMT-1 mechanics truck, which has been designed and purpose-built for technicians and mechanics in agricultural, construction, municipality, and all other sorts of industries. This is just one of dozens of custom truck bodies they offer for a variety of trades, so be sure to check out their selection over at naphide.com, and thanks again to Naphide for making this series possible. Now, let's get to our first and foremost enhancement for 2025. SOLIDWORKS typically receives some sort of fundamental general update each and every year, whether that be a facelift for the UI or a new checkbox in the system settings, and this year is no exception, with a variety of overall performance improvements, updated add-in support for SOLIDWORKS Connected, and plenty of others. However, our top pick for the fundamentals and user interface category this year is the addition of the ZUP template. That's right, especially for those of you focused on manufacturing or importing models from ZUP CAD programs, your dreams have finally come true, and you can now specify a ZUP orientation for the coordinate system when creating a new part or assembly. You'll find this option in the Templates tab when using Advanced Mode to begin a new part or assembly, and this is an important detail because as of this version, only the default templates can be used to specify the ZUP orientation. Even more importantly, this orientation can't be changed without a workaround, after the new file has been created or for any files that already exist. So be sure you know which orientation you need before you begin. All that being said, the addition of the ZUP orientation is a simple but very welcome quality of life improvement for those of us involved in CNC programming and manufacturing. Our second top enhancement comes from the two-dimensional world of sketching, specifically linear and circular patterns, which have historically caused users a bit of distress when attempting to pattern fully defined sketch entities. In previous years, when creating a linear sketch pattern, there were some cases where a fully defined result was impossible, especially when creating a pattern in two directions using anything other than the X and Y axes as the direction references. In SOLIDWORKS 2025, this has been resolved, and you'll notice that when creating a linear sketch pattern from a fully defined sketch entity, checking all the constraint boxes in the property manager actually results in a fully defined sketch. This is now true for circular patterns as well, but the science behind it is a bit different. In circular patterns, a hidden coincident relation is automatically applied to the point you choose to pattern around, likewise yielding a fully defined sketch. With this new ability to automatically add constraints to sketch patterns, fully defining sketches is faster than ever. But be warned that if you choose to pattern underdefined sketch entities, you won't be able to manually adjust the patterned results. Moving on to the bread and butter of what's new for most SOLIDWORKS users, the features category includes a few pretty exciting enhancements involving variable radius fillets and the move copy body command. But our favorite for this year is the ability to pattern reference geometry. Now most of you probably already know why this is so exciting, but in case you're a newer user, this means you can now create both linear and circular patterns of both planes and axes, which are fundamental to part design, but could be tedious to create in the past. Now yes, it has been possible for quite some time to create a series of planes with defined spacing and their own dimensions, and there's still some compelling use cases for that workflow, like a scenario where you want to be able to adjust the individual spacing after creating the planes. However, being able to use the linear pattern feature with planes opens up new possibilities like the up to reference option, which will allow you to equally space a set number of planes between a pair of selections, or automatically add and remove planes at a specified spacing as your designs are edited. So there's a ton of new capability here, and of course, let's not forget that we can use circular patterns too. When it comes to part models in SOLIDWORKS, critical details are obviously very important for precise and accurate manufacturing. 
but in many cases, especially when those parts are destined for a massive assembly like the KMT-1, or they need to be protected from prying eyes, simpler is often better. The D-Feature tool has been around since 2011, but has seen continuous improvement over the years with new modes and better control for simplifying designs to improve assembly performance and remove critical design details to protect intellectual property. SOLIDWORKS 2025 introduces the Silhouette method in the D-Feature tool for parts, a mode which was previously restricted to assemblies only. This mode of D-Feature allows you to create a unique, highly simplified part file from a detailed original while maintaining an associative link to that original file. This means that any changes made to the original model will update the simplified version, which can be used in assemblies to improve performance or sent out to third parties without having to give away important design details. Speaking of assemblies, they've received the greatest number of improvements out of any of the core enhancement categories this year, including new assembly visualization tools, new speed pack capabilities, and the ability to include advanced and mechanical mates when copying components, among several others. My personal favorite, however, involves an evaluation tool you've probably used before. Interference detection is now available in large design review mode, dramatically streamlining the design review process for large or complex assemblies that would otherwise take a long time to load or calculate in resolved or lightweight mode. There's a couple tricky things to note about this enhancement though, with the first being that interference detection does not appear by default on the command manager tab for large design review. To use it, navigate to Tools, Evaluate, then Interference Detection, or consider enabling the Assembly Toolbar for quicker access. Additionally, there's a few limitations when using Interference Detection in Large Design Review mode. Most notably, interferences will be identified as surface intersections and will not report the volume of interference as they would in Resolved mode. There's also several options that are unavailable in this mode, such as treating coincidence as interference, ignoring hidden components, and sorting components by size, among others. Still, interference detection for large design review is sure to bring some relief to those of you regularly working with large assemblies. Our last major category of enhancements on the design side of SOLIDWORKS is sheet metal, including improvements to the tab and slot feature and a new multi-length option for edge flanges. But our pick for top sheet metal enhancement this year is a brand new feature, the bend notch. These are incredibly easy to place by selecting the bends you'd like to apply them to or collecting all the bends automatically, specifying a triangular, circular, or rectangular shape, and specifying a size. Bend notch features only appear in the flat pattern of sheet metal parts and can be a great way of communicating to manufacturers where a press break is intended to be positioned to create bends. Just like interference detection though, we do have a couple notes for you. The first being that once again, this feature is not in the command manager by default, so you'll need to customize the sheet metal tab and add it yourself, or get to the bend notch feature by going to insert, sheet metal, and then bend notch. Again, these can only be applied when the flat pattern is active, and you may see a warning appear if your bend notch is too wide for the bend allowance or thickness you're using, so be aware. So what else is new in SOLIDWORKS 2025? Well, a lot actually. Remember, this video has only covered what we believe to be the very best of the best, and there's a lot more to learn in each of these categories along with several enhancements for drawings, weldments, and even add-ins like SOLIDWORKS Simulation and MBD. So if you want to keep learning, be sure to check out our full series on what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2025 over at solidprofessor.com, and consider subscribing here as well. We'll be releasing new videos over the coming weeks, taking a closer look at all the new features you've seen today, plus a whole lot more. Thanks again to Naphide for making this series possible, and thank you for watching What's New in SOLIDWORKS.